All right. Let's start with present. All right. So, um, welcome to the life management um, webinar. The reason why we're calling it life management is mainly because this is kind of an all-encompassing um, topic. Uh, it's kind of skills of how we as young adults can um, can skills for you know we as young adults um, can manage our lives um, and that includes everything from our medical needs to um, communication as well as um, you know how to maintain the things that we need to get done day to day and week to week so um, I thought that the first thing that we should start with is if we can get this to go is communication um, and this is mainly because a lot of us with Noon syndrome have trouble with our communication skills a lot of us have trouble with expressive language um, so it it's kind of good to overview things tips and tr tricks to get better at those because these are things that there's no real cheat or workaround for it's just you have to practice um so there are two categories that i wanted to go over the first is public speaking and this is not just standing at a podium in front of a bunch of people it's really any material that needs that is prepared ahead of time including webinars like this one um, the first is you should know your material um, and that includes practicing and that's just good because if you know your material then you know what you're going to say and you use less ums and uhs and um, verbal fillers as I verbally fill to and it makes your speech flow a little better. Um, the other thing, as I have so nicely de demonstrated, is that mistakes happen. Don't get wrapped up in what you said 10 seconds ago, because you should be concentrating on what you're saying right now. As it also, the other side of that is also that you should concentrate on what you're saying right now, rather than what you're going to be saying in 10 seconds. And that's mostly because if you concentrate on you know what mistakes you made or what mistakes you might make things that you're trying to anticipate you might mess up more in the present moment the other thing that's good is to gain experience um public speaking is not something that you can just pick up and go with i mean there are a couple people that are just gifted at publicly speaking to 100 people but most of us it takes practice and even if we practice by ourselves or in front of our family a hundred times, we still need that practice of real world experience of preparing and addressing people in public with prepared material. Um, the fourth thing that's good to kind of keep in mind is to dress the part. Um, this is different from the job webinar where we talked about dressing for an interview. Um, this is more of if you dress sloppy, then that kind of carries over into how you feel about yourself. And how you feel about yourself is going to carry over into your speech. I'm not saying, you know, there's a certain way to dress. I'm just saying it, it's something to think about that if you're, you know, making a presentation in front of colleagues or in front of, you know, people that you need to have their opinions um, matter. Uh, you want to make sure that you dress a little nicer, um, dress a little cleaner. Um, and the fifth thing is fake it till you make it. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, don't admit that you don't know what you're doing. Just go with it. Um, and nine times out of ten, the audience is none the wiser. They just think that you're very professional and you have it all together because unless you say that you don't have it all together, people kind of assume the best in people. Um, 
so that's public speaking. And then the other thing is speaking one-on-one. And in my experience, this is harder for those of us with Noonan syndrome because while we have that expressive language thing, there's almost more factors involved with speaking to one person because all those little things that you pick up about people, they're picking up about you. And for me, in my experience, that makes me a little more anxious. It makes me, you know, constantly thinking about things that I shouldn't be thinking about. Like, am I making eye contact with the person in front of me rather than what I'm saying? Um, which makes me mess up more often. Um, So the first thing is be true to yourself and embrace the differences in others. Um, This means that if you don't make eye contact often when speaking to, to someone, it's not that it's something that you should work on it if you want to work toward, you know, making eye contact. This is more of accept your reality as it is. Um, if you don't make eye contact, it's not the end of the world. Um, you, When speaking one-on-one, when communicating with another person, you should be concentrating more on what you're communicating rather than like the one, one factor in a million. Um, and to that effect, embrace the differences in others. Everybody, regardless of whether they have Noonan syndrome or not, has little quirks about them. Um, now, our quirks are more community-based than, you know, other people, but, you know, some people might, you know, twirl their hair or do something, you know, you find distracting when you're communicating with them, but you have to just kind of accept that that's who they are and not, like, overly criticize them about it. Now, I know most of you who are listening to it this are not overly critical, but it's, again, something to keep in mind is, you know, be true to yourself and let others be true to themselves as well. The other thing is be enthusiastic. Now, for me, I talk with my hands all the time. And having me not talk with my hands, as I'm doing right now, is really challenging for me and makes me mess up more. It helps me to concentrate to have something that I'm doing other than speaking. Um, that, of course, has to do with what I'm doing. I, I'm not saying, you know, while I'm talking with somebody, play with words with friends or Scrabble or, you know, Parcheesi. Uh, so allow yourself to be enthusiastic. Do the little things that you do to keep yourself concentrating on what you're doing, which was communicating with another person. Um, and don't be too overly critical of those quirks. Um, And this ties in with the third thing, which is body language. Um, And this has more to do with if you're crossing your arms, then you're coming across to that person as you don't want to hear it. It's a very negative kind of, you know, way to, to show your body. But if you sit forward and kind of sit straight up, then it tells them that, Um, you're listening to them and you're interested in what they're saying Um, and body language in communication is a whole other topic that we could cover if you guys are interested Um, but those are two very basic things that you that can be concentrated on is you know make sure that you're showing that you're listening or make sure that you're engaged in the conversation Um, the fourth thing, and this is really hard, but it's good to be twice as positive as you are negative when communicating with a person. Um, this has a lot to do with if you have a critique for somebody like, you know, a parent, uh, then it's really good to make sure that while, you know, while you make it known that you have a critique you want to concentrate also on the positives that are going on within a situation. Um, And as a example of this, if I were to be talking to a person and think that, you know, they're not listening to me, it's a lot better 
to say something along the lines of, well, I feel that you're not listening to me, but I do appreciate, you know, points A, B, and C, because that makes the other person know that they feel good about, you know, the things that they're doing right, but they can take note on what they're doing wrong. Um, this works really well when getting your parents to do things. Um, I'm just saying this to the young adults, parents, shut your ears. Um, mostly because it's, it's a quote unquote mature way of communicating with a person. Um, it does not go over well when you say, well, you know, you just don't listen to me and you don't understand me and, you know, go off on a rant. Um, I think all of us can agree that that does not work when talking to parents. Um, and to tie in with that, conversations are give and take. Um, this goes, you know, you have to listen just as much as you, you're inputting into the conversation. And I have a lot of trouble with this, um, mostly because I have, I get anxious when I, we go into topics that I don't know what I'm talking about because then I don't know what to say. And then there are awkward pauses and that increases my anxiety and it just kind of snowballs. So I tend to talk about things that I want to talk about and I hoard the conversation. Um, it's something, this is not like a on off switch. It's, you know, something that you have to work on little bit by little bit. Um, so that will, that is something that if you want to work on it will come with time. So the next topic is going to be self care. Um, this is going to be a very brief overview of self-care, mostly because it's a gigantic topic and we will be covering it at the conference. Um, this is, you know, medical care, financial care, and um, a offshoot of medical care, but I think it earns its own topic, which is pacing, um, because pacing is really, really important for us. Um, so the first is going to be medical care. Um, so with, you know, we're all young adults who are listening to this webinar. Some of you out there in, you know, YouTube land might not be young adults, but this is a webinar geared toward young adults. So I'm going to address them. Um, we're getting older and as we get older, um, the societal, I'll say the societal expectation that we take care of ourselves more often has increased. That is not to say that we should, um, mostly because we're all at a different points in the spectrum of Noonan syndrome and we can't, you know, pinpoint what is the right level. The only person who can is you. Um, I will say though that with you know the the self-care of life management of you know managing our own lives it can't happen without you yourself engaged so um you have to at least take the first step i'm not saying that you know you're 18 you should move out and never talk to your parents again because you don't need them and you can pay all your bills and you have it all figured out it never works like that, even for people who don't have Noonan syndrome or other, you know, disabilities or issues going on with their medical um, lives. But, you know, it, it's good to take that first step. It's good to, you know, say that, you know, if you want to say that you're going to be in charge of your pill regimen or you're going to be in charge of dealing with the appointments for one doctor. Um, all it takes is one first step to say that I'm engaged in my self-care, which I can tell you feels awesome when you start doing that. When you know what you're saying and you're engaging in the doctor and it's not just your caregiver or guardians who are talking to the doctor about your treatment plans, it feels really awesome because you know, you're in charge and it's, it's all about independence. We are wired as human beings to want to be independent. Um, 
again, this is not to say you should just go off and get an apartment and be able to pay all your bills overnight. Um, your care caregivers and guardians or parents can help manage things. Um, it it it's good to have a third party to say that you know to to kind of look at the big picture um, because. Our lives are so littered with doctor's appointments and pill regimens and therapies and a lot of other little stuff that it's hard to see what progress is being made without somebody to give you a perspective on that. Um, so the other thing with medical care is good habits and the way that technology can help us with that. Um, and by good habits, I mean, do your PT exercises, take your pills on time, drink water if that's what your doctors say that you need to do. Um, it, you know, I get it. It sucks being in your early 20s and having to do, you know, 20 minutes of physical therapy exercises at night. It's just not fair. Um, but there's a reason why it's been assigned. Um, they're good habits to have because the doctor's opinion is that it, that, that will help make you feel better. And that's the long-term goal, goal is to feel better. Um, so it's good to form these good habits of always taking your pills and always doing your physical therapy or occupational therapy. That being said, it's really hard to keep all these things straight. Um, mostly because there's so much of it. And that's why for, for those of us who want more independence and want to keep, keep track of more things, that technology is our best friend. We live in such an awesome era that we have apps and smartphones and alarms that can just remind us of, you know, when to take our pills, when to drink the water, when to do our physical therapy, what physical therapy exercises we have for the day. Um, there's, you know, a ton of technology out there as simple as the alarm app on your phone um, can remind you of what you need to do when, where you need to go when. Um, the calendar application can remind you of what doctor visit you have that week. Um, it makes a lot of things, uh, uh, it makes the very large amount of stuff that we have to deal with having Noonan syndrome into a much more manageable sized um, box, I will say, because, you know, we're in our 20s. Who doesn't, you know, carry around our laptop or tablet or smartphone and have all our schedules at, you know, the click of a button. Um, so it, it's, it's good to form good habits, but, you know, it, it's not, you know, something that you should have off the top of your head. You shouldn't be expected to list the 30 things that you have to do in a day. Um, to help with that, you can, you know, type them out or, you know, write them down or, or do whatever works. Um, to remind you of when you need to do things. Um, and that helps with, um, that ties in with preventative care. Um, and with preventative care, um, that has more to do with the occupational therapies, the physical therapies. Um, these are things that have less to do with um, It has less to do with the things that we need to deal with right now, our surgeries, our um, immediate injury, or uh, the doctors call it acute issues, and more to do with the chronic issues. You, you work to not to prevent the chronic issues from getting worse. Um, and like I said, you know, ha having to do your physical therapy exercise really sucks because it's really, really challenging to do them. But it's good because it'll prevent, 
you know, further injuries for those, those of us with joint hypermobility, it'll prevent, you know, further issues down the line. Um, or so the theory goes. We can't predict the future. We can only make probabilities, I, is, I guess, what the point is. Um, that is, so all this is good. Um, but I will note that if it isn't broke, don't fix it. If you have a system laid in for your medical care and it works for you, ignore everything that I'm saying in this presentation. Um, mostly because changing systems is going to be a lot worse than keeping the one that you have. Um, because habits get broken and, you know, things get miscommunicated and, you know, system, it, the, the system, when the system changes, there's a breakdown of communication. Um, and it, it's best just to keep with the system that you have. Um, that is not to say that you should not challenge yourself. Um, you shouldn't say, well, you know, having my parents do everything for me works, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, if, if you honestly, you know, have what you can handle and have your parents handle the rest, good for you. Um, but as I said at the beginning of the medical care section, we can't execute self-care without the self-involved. So then we move on to budgeting. Um, financially, financial management um, is a challenge, mostly because a lot of us are on disability or Medicaid. Um, savings, you know, is a difficult thing to come by. There are those of us who have jobs, um, and whatever little those of us who have jobs make, a lot of that goes to rent and food and, you know, going out and having fun with friends. Um, those of us who do make a little more money, though, should put some money away in our savings accounts. Um, most people that I know at work don't do this. Um, and this is an unfortunate side effect of having Noonan's is that we have to be prepared for excessive doctor's visits, excessive, you know, treatment plans. Um, and it's really, really useful to have an in case of emergency savings or an ICE savings. Um, an application that I can give you is that I needed to go to pain rehab in March. And it was, it was 1500 after, um, after my insurance uh, kicked in, but it was a $40,000 uh, program. Um, and if I didn't have any money in savings, I couldn't have paid down that $1,500. Um, if I didn't have insurance then, and I didn't have in any savings, then things would have been a lot more complicated. Um, so, and you know, we have surgeries and, and Things come up for us, is my point, um, that we don't plan on. Um, and it's really good to have money in the bank so we don't have to have a massive panic attack about how we're going to pay for a sh surgery that we absolutely need. Um, so, and, and that's just for those of us who are, you know, living semi-independently or independently um, and are able to pay those types of things. Um within within reason of our budget. So it's a good tip to say that we're going to pay what is necessary. So rent, food, clothes, um, then save some money and then pay for some fun things. Fun things are definitely necessary as a part of life. It's not, you know, well, I'm going to pay for my rent and my food, exactly all the food that I'm, you know, going to need from the grocery store at the cheapest cost and I'm not going to pay for anything else and I'm going to save everything else because that's no fun. Um, for those of us who, you know, are currently on, I'm guessing you have internet and that's a cost. Um, and, um, going to the movies, you know, things that we enjoy, you should be able to enjoy your life. Um, it is good though to track your purchases and the trends of what you purchase. 
um, if you, like, I guess the common example is that if you're going to Starbucks every single day and you, you know, really want something cool like a moped, um, instead of going to Starbucks every single day, you can get coffee from home in the, you know, bag and make a coffee maker. Um, save, you know, the, I think like three fifty on the coffee and, you know, save up for the moped. Uh, it'll take a little while doing that, but, um, it'll, you know, the point is with that example is that you can eliminate extras to save for things that you want. Um, also, you know, you can eliminate extras to save more if you feel like you're overspending. Um, and back to technology, it's really nice because there are applications that you can use to track your purchases, track the trends of your purchases, excuse me, and set goals. One application that I really like is called Mint. Um, it's a website as well as an application for your computer, your tablet, and your phone. Um, and it'll track your your banking um, information so that you can know what you're what you're spending your money on. It'll it gives you nice graphs. Um, it gives you you know graphs that tell you if you're overspending, underspending on something. Um, it's a really useful tool. Um, and it also keeps it really, really simple, um, which I like because I don't want to have to, I don't, balancing your checkbook and, and keeping a budget in that way is kind of a thing of the past. Not many people write checks anymore except for rent. Um, and based on that, um, what, you know, it, it kind of automatically does that for you. Um, there are lots of other applications. I'm not endorsing Mint in any way. Um, it's just the one that I use. All right, and then, so pacing. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing pacing up as a separate thing again is that for those of us with Noonan syndrome, we have endurance issues. Um, we also have physical handicaps, some of us. Um, and there's also some of us that have, you know, feeding issues and energy issues and there's a lot of things that come into the fact that we all have to pace um there's a lot to do in a day and with all the doctor stuff that we have to do that's thrown into what we have to do in a day um so it's kind of a good thing to keep pacing in mind um there are two categories of things that are necessary to get done. Um, the first are medical necessities. So your physical therapy, your therapies, your doctor's visits, um, making sure you're taking your pills on time. Um, and that kind of pacing is, as I said, easily rectified with setting alarms. Um, one application that I really like is called Mango Health. Um, it's actually keeps track of when you have to take your pills and gives you an alarm and then as you take your pills it gives you points and then you can buy things with those points um or you know donate to the aspca or there, uh, there are other uh charities that you can donate to but it's really kind of cool because it's it gives you um kind of uh good reinforcement of taking your pills and then it becomes a good habit um, so the, so there are the medical necessities. Um, and then there's, you know, the basics of, you know, living your life, which is laundry, cleaning, cooking, going to your job and coming back home. Um, all of these things are necessary <laughs> to unfortunately live, you know, life at home or in an apartment. Um, if I usually do a load of laundry a week. Um, there are those who probably live with their parents that their parents can do their laundry for them. Um, it's still good to, you know, know how to do your laundry. Um, that is a skill that, um, I've seen many a college student completely lost because they don't know how to separate their, their colors from the whites, um, or know how much soap to put in or anything like that. Um, 
but you know laundry seems like a really simple thing to a lot of people because you know you put the clothes in you set the timer and then you you walk away but it takes energy it's you know not just you put the clothes in but you have to you know sort the clothes and then you know lift the clothes into the in, into the washer and then you have to be mindful enough to make make sure that when the washer stops you you know put the the wet clothes into the dryer um and then when the dryer goes off you have to you know take the clothes out fold the clothes it it takes energy so it's it's something that you have to factor into your day it's not an effortless thing like cow, you know potato uh being a potato couch and watch t- tv the entire day um the other thing is cooking um cooking is a little harder because it takes a lot of standing um a lot of moving around going from low to high and high to low um I'm not so good with this because I can only stand for about 10 minutes at this point um, in my medical care. So it's good to be mindful of what your capabilities are when you're cooking. Um, If you need a stool in the kitchen, put a stool in there. Um, Make sure that you take breaks. If you're going to be cutting and chopping a lot, you can totally just sit down and cut and chop while you're seated. You do not have to stand over a counter and cut and chop. Um, it, you know, and also, you know, if it's a very labor intensive dish that you're making, make sure that you can take breaks. Um, if you're, you know, for instance, making a lasagna, um, you can make all the filling stuff that you need to put it together and then put everything in the refrigerator and then walk away for 20, 30 minutes and sit down and take a load off. Um, It's important to, you know, that you set a timer so you remember that you have to go, you know, back and finish. But, um, that, in, that, that will allow you to, um, cook, but also break it up so you're not, you know, pushing yourself beyond what you can do. Um, because if we push ourselves beyond what we can do, then we become exhausted and then we're no good the next day. Um, and I think all of us who have been to the conference and, um, the 5k and any of these, organ- um, these get togethers that we, we've had have experienced that, you know, post conference exhaustion, um, that we don't feel like doing anything at all because our bodies hurt and we've overdone it and we're just tired. Um, the third thing is cleaning. Um, and I will admit that I'm horrible at this because most of my energy goes into going to work and coming back home and cooking food. And then once a week I do laundry. Um, it is good to keep in mind that cleaning is a very labor intensive thing. Um, it is by far the hardest thing that I have experienced in living alone is that, you know, if you do not clean, your place becomes a slob or a a pigsty, not a slob. Um, and bugs come and then you've got other issues and it just kind of snowballs if you don't clean. If you don't cook, then you can always go out and get McDonald's or Sonic or whatever you want. Um, if you don't do laundry, I guess you could always buy new clothes, but, um, cleaning, the only remedy if you don't clean ever is if you, um, move essentially. Um, and I've done that once before and it was not fun. Um, there are, there are things that you can do to help this. If you have a little extra money, you can hire someone to come clean your place for you a couple times a month or once a month. Um, which is good if you, if you do it once a month or every other month, then you can have them, um, come do the heavier, you know, scrub things that you just, you know, if you can't do it, um, let them do the heavier duty stuff and that'll leave you for, you know, making sure everything keeps organized, everything keeps off the floor. You don't, you know, leave your clothes lying around. Um, which is easier to do and then your apartment's clean and the bugs don't come, um, which is important, especially as summer comes and it, you know, draws to a close because the bugs will come in as it gets cold. Um, and in so far as 
the medical necessities as well as everything that we have to do in, in a day is to use your time efficiently. And what I mean by this is to break it up. Um, don't do 20 things that you need to do that need, that require standing in a row. Um, this will exhaust you. Um, and it overextends us. So instead of doing 20 things that you need to do standing in a row, do two things standing, two things sitting, two things standing, two things st sitting until you get everything done. Um, make sure you take breaks. Um, especially when you listen to your body. If your body says at, you know, two in the afternoon, I need a nap, let your body take a nap. Um, it's, it's important to, you know, to get everything done, but not as important as making sure that you can get up tomorrow. Um, because there's unfortunately more to do tomorrow. Um, it's a good rule of thumb. Um, th those of us with um, joint hypermobility might be familiar with doctors telling us to go 80% rather than the full 100% that we can go. Um, it's And with pacing, it's the same thing. Um, do about half of what you think that you can do. And then sit down and take a break. Um, and then do the other half later. Um, and this is just good to make sure that, you know, you're not overextending yourself. So that's pacing and that's self-care. Again, we're going to expand on this at a later date. Um, I will will work on getting um, it so that the presentation of medical care is um, somehow published onto YouTube um, to, so that those who aren't at the conference can review it and those who are at the conference can see it again just in case they need to go over things. Um, so the other, th uh, another section is time management. Um, so time management is hard. There's a lot to do in a day and not very long to do it, especially if we're taking breaks. Um, one thing that I love to do is to keep a to-do list. Um, this is not, you know, create a whole new system. This is, if you have a sticky pad that sits by your desk or a notepad that you always have on you, write, or a smartphone, write down what you need to do in a day. Write down what you need to do next week. Um, write down everything that needs to get done. Um, and this helps because you have a comprehensive list of what needs to get done and by when. Um, and long lists like this can be overwhelming, so it's important to know that all you have to do right now when looking at a list is to complete step one. You only need to cross one thing off the list, and then you can reevaluate. Um, and it's important to cross off step one mainly because of momentum. Um, as th there's a physics law that says an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion. So to apply that theory to to-do to lists, if you do nothing on your to-do list, nothing will get done. If you start doing things on your to-do list, you start thinking of other things that you can get done and things get completed. Um, it works. Keeping in mind that all you have to complete is step one works really well for me. Um, if I have a project that I need to complete and I'm like, eh, I'll take tonight off. It's really easy for me the next day to just be like, eh, I'll take tonight off. Um, instead of you know, saying, oh, I'll just do, you know, two things on the list tonight. Just two things. It'll take 10 minutes for me to complete these two things. Um, by doing that, then that keeps me motivated the next day because, you know, the next day I can say, well, I did two things last night. Maybe I'll do, you know, three things tonight or I'm having a bad day. So I'll do one thing tonight. Um, it's also important in our busy lives of medical stuff and social lives and other things that go on to keep a daily or weekly calendar. Um, it helps to keep track of what doctors you see when, <laughs> um, because 
otherwise you're constantly worrying about, well, you know, did I forget to, you know, that, that I had an appointment today and, um, the cancellation fees are like 20 bucks, um, which, you know, is throwing money out the window. Um, if all you have to do is keep a daily or weekly calendar and keep reminders on it. Um, one thing with to-do lists is, um, and the calendars is applications on your gadgets. Um, and I know I noticed, I've noted this before, but, um, applications, I really like Wonderlist. It's a really simple, basic to-do list. Um, I use it for basically all my to-do lists. You have different, you can have different categories, um, to-do lists literally as long as my arm, um, and I'll just keep going. Um, as long as you want to keep the to-do list length, it'll keep going. Um, the other thing is the native calendar app on your phone is really nice because you can set alerts, you can set reminders, you can set it to say, you know, you have a doctor's appointment in two weeks. I set that up so that I know when I need to make doctor's appointments for, you know, the following two months um just because you know some of these doctors we see once a year and it's really hard to schedule things a year in advance so if you set up an appointment two months from when your yearly appointment is and you know it reminds you set up your appointment then you can just call your doctor's office and it's a lot easier um to-do lists also help you be strategic about your energy. And as we talked about in pacing, um, it's really important to be strategic about your energy. If you do, if you have a to-do list with a bunch of stuff that, you know, some of it takes a lot of energy and t some of it takes a little, mix and match. Don't do all the things that take a lot of energy. Um, do some of the things that take a little bit and some of the things that t take a lot. And by then, by that, you know, you can get things done. So the other important thing is to know is don't multitask. It's really tempting to multitask in American culture. Um, we, it seems that society loves it. Everyone's doing two or three things at once. Um, for us and our focus issues and those of us with learning disabilities, it's really good to just concentrate on one thing at a time. Don't concentrate on, you know, tomorrow's stuff. Concentrate on what you need to do right in this moment. Um, it That helps with not doing too much at once. Um, it helps with making sure that what you're giving is 100%. Um, if you're giving two things 50% at once, then both things are going to be mediocre and you're probably going to want to do go back and do them if you're like me and type A and really want to <laughs> get things done. Um, it's also he helps with not multitasking if you prioritize. Um, if you have 10 things to do in a day and three of them can be pushed till next week and two of them can be pushed till tomorrow, you know, you've got five things to do instead of 10. Um, this is not to say to uh, procrastinate what needs to get done. Um, this is more to do with really think about what needs to get done um, and what, what's important in your to-do list. Um, the other thing is with to-do lists and multitasking and time management is to take a break once in a while. Turn your phone off. You know, don't go off. Don't go on Facebook because. Um, that's just, you know, you'll get wrapped up in that and that's a cyclone. Go watch a movie with your friends or your parents. Go read a book. Um, unwind. Unplug. Um, it's important to have fun once in a while. Um, and the, the fifth thing, the last thing with um, not multitasking is to work in a quiet environment. And this helps with focus. Um, personally, it's a lot easier for me to fall in the habit of multitasking when I'm surrounded by other people and I'm trying to work on something because when everyone's working on other things, then I really want to work on it as much as possible. Um, and I think that's mainly just cause I'm a, I have a tendency to be a driven person. Um, 
it's I work best in a quiet environment because then I can concentrate on what I need to concentrate on nothing else. Um, I'm not concentrating on the conversation that my coworkers are having while at the same time trying to write up a report while at the same time, you know, having a conversation via chat with my friend. Um, I'm just doing the one thing. I'm just writing up the report because that's what matters. All right. And all encompassing time management um, is how to use your time efficiently. Um, this includes, so the first is use downtime as your downtime. Do not go to your, you know, iPhone and start checking your email and your Facebook messages and, you know, all the, all those other things because your downtime is your downtime. Now, if you like playing words with friends during your downtime as a, as a social thing, that's fine. I'm not saying, you know, that these are not hard and fast rules. Um, but I use Facebook to interact with a lot of you, and as the member at large, um, I consider that part of my work because I'm trying to, you know, make sure that the Facebook group page is updated and I'm keeping up with everybody else's lives. I'm not focusing on my own. Um, so it's good to focus on my, I like, I enjoy focusing on my own life once in a while. Um, and I, so you, you know, unplug, use downtime as downtime. Um, the other thing is find when you are most productive. Um, some of us are morning people. Some of us are evening people. Um, work when you are the most productive. And that means when you can work most efficiently, um, without, being without distract being distracted by other people um this does not mean that i'm giving you permission to pull an all-nighter because you work best at 2 a.m um this means that you know if you work be best at you know i i get up at 4 a.m so you know i work best usually between five and six when i'm on the bus um, I get a lot done when I'm on the bus. Um, so that's my time that I am most productive. So I, you know, get what I need to get done first thing out of the way. Um, and then when I get home and I'm tired and I'm less productive, I don't feel guilty about it. Um, if you, you know, work best at 4 p.m. and you know, you get home from school, you grab yourself a snack, or you get home from work and you grab yourself a snack, you sit down and you start, you know, start your projects. That's great too. Um, it's all about when you can, you know, get work done. And this is not just, you know, projects and, and reports and, you know, paperwork related work. This also has to do with cleaning and, and cooking and the things that we talked about and pacing, um, things that need to get done. Like, therapies. Um, so you can apply all this of when you're most productive, get that work done. The other thing is to schedule yourself efficiently. Um, I know from personal experience, it's not always the best idea to schedule three doctor's appointments in one day, unless you're going an hour, you, it's an hour's drive away and you're seeing all your specialists in one day. That's a slightly different thing. Um, but if you're Doctors are all local. Um, it's it's good to schedule one doctor at a time, mostly because that keeps things straight in your head. Um, if you see your cardiologist, your endocrinologist, and you know your you know physiatrist, which is your pain doctor, all in one day, the messages are going to get garbled. Um, so no the best way for you to schedule things. Um, also, keep yourself organized. Um, if you keep everything on sticky notes, it's great that you wrote it all down, but sticky notes have a tendency to get lost. So if your desk is a mess and you've got sticky notes everywhere, it you know, you're not you're going to miss things and then your time isn't going to be used as efficiently as it could be. Um, and then the last thing is, with the quiet environment, reduce interruptions. Um, and that's mainly to ensure that 
you keep yourself focused and um and and make sure that you're reducing interruptions um So this last thing is applying it all. And uh, there's this really common saying um, that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I'm not saying that if you fail to plan, you, you know, you're going to die and everything's going to fail. And, you know, it's the end of the world as we know it. Um, the sentiment is that if there's no preparation into how you manage your life, um, then tendency is that it won't go well um we and you can apply this by you know using the applications that you have that i've mentioned in this presentation or others that you've found and if you have apps that you'd like to recommend please email me i'd love to hear about it um you can also make a plan but be prepared to change it Nobody knows better than us that our lives are in upheaval and things change and, you know, suddenly a doctor tells you that you need surgery and you did not plan for it. Um, so be semi-flexible with that. Um, it sucks. And, you know, if you ever want to call me and bitch about how much it sucks, I'm totally open to that. Um, but... You know, that doesn't change the fact that plans will change. Um, this being said, do what's best for you. Um, do what, what works best for you. Um, everything that was mentioned are things that, in my opinion, work well for me. And I, tried, I try to give a, a broad spectrum of what's good for others. But um, if there's something that works for you just go with it and don't worry about anything else because that's all that matters is that you're managing your life the way that you want to manage it um and with that we're um going to wrap up um and i'm going to stop sharing my screen i um am going to note note that um Next month is the conference. I hope to see you all there. Um, if I don't get to see you there, then I hope to see you online at our next um, webinar. Um, I believe that the next webinar is going to be in August, and that's going to be for teens. Um, the webinar after that is going to be for young adults, and that'll be in September. So if I don't see you in July, I'll see you in September. All right. Thank you. Bye.